Hey, baseball fans, my name is Dave from the Frontier League Journal, and today we have a Georgia native, Jared Cheek on. How are you, Jared? I'm doing great. Doing great. Just an off day. Enjoying the off day. Hey, well, are you really enjoying it? Because from what I've seen on the on Twitter and what you're working on, you may not have uh, that much of a uh, that, that that great of an off day. It's it's great. I mean, I've been I've been pumped to to get this VR going and 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 start it so we can get it get it finished and finalized as as fast as possible to get these guys able to see themselves. Okay, and I want to talk about a few things because before we get to it, because I think uh, I'll, I'll just lay down the foundation of what we'll talk after. Uh, you're from Athens, um, Georgia. You you were with the Cubs. Uh, you were drafted by, by the Cubs. Um, how did you get into baseball? What what gave you that that passion for the for the game? Um, you know it. it it came from learning baseball at a young age in the yard. My mom taught me how to throw. My dad was my coach for the longest time. And being able to watch guys play the game on TV just kind of implanted that vision in my, in my head of wanting to be there one day. And really what sparked it for me was just how fun my parents made it for me. And, mm -hmm. and since then, it was just all about having fun. Hmm. Am I crazy or people call you MacGyver? <laughs> Chad started calling me MacGyver, yes, for okay. For Chad, time. okay, Chad uh, began to, to call you MacGyver. Uh, you are very cerebral, from what I get from people who I've talked to uh, about you. Uh, what is your education? Uh, I went back to school at UGA after I got released for the Cubs, and I finished my computer science degree. Oh, okay. And uh, how did you get back into baseball? Because you're very cerebral. Uh, there, there is something for you to find in baseball that is, uh, that is strate strate strategic. I barely speak English, man. Uh, that, that is very strategic. Uh, but is it passion that drives you just to go back? Because you're an intelligent guy, man. I mean, everybody says it. You, you could have a job right now that could pay you more, I think. It is. It's it's about baseball. I, I love baseball. And, and as I'm playing today, I'm still learning so much. And I think that's um, where I'm like, I, I haven't heard that term before cerebral. And I, I like it because I still allow my mind to grow. I love the growth mentality. I heard that with the Cubs when we did some of the mental uh, side of the game. Um, and just being able to allow yourself to grow. Even today, I'm learning new stuff. I'm I'm able to filter. That's important, too. And uh, pretty much I applied that to schooling and I applied that back into baseball once I decided I wanted to play again when I was getting done with school. So it's just really that growth mindset that, that has done it for me. Can you elaborate on, on what the pitching, uh, no, the mental side of your uh, education with the Cubs was? Was, it, was there some exercise? What, what was it? Um, it was a lot of... It was a lot of interaction. Um, it was like an hour or and a half in spring training. We'd sit down and they would show us some cool TED Talks. They would have some cool exercises for us. Like, for instance, I remember, and I do this with a lot of the young young kids that I work and do lessons with, um, one of the exercises to get the brain going was just standing one person in front of the other. And one would have to say one number, the other num uh, would have to say the other number and then go back. And so you can never go to three and you had to start counting over again. So you had to say one, two, three, one, two, th and it just got the brain going. So it was just about how little something like that was to go ahead and kickstart your day to get your mind ready to just think. And one of the other things they did really well too was uh, they did a lot of meditation and the type of meditation was just the kind of meditation that clears your brain to be ready to soak up information like it just clears you and you're, if it's something you were thinking about before it really just kind of resetted you and just allowed you to be ready for what it was you were about to do whether it was the beginning of spring training whether it's you know about to do your throwing program before a game um it was it was really really good stuff on the mental side with the cubs would you say that you use that well your position on the team to um to teach the younger guys? I mean, do, do people come to you with your experience and what you have to offer? Do they come to you for either advice or do you set up some exercise for the mental and the physical side of, the, of baseball? I've definitely had guys pick my brain um, and I definitely try to keep it uh, as level as possible. I'm not trying to get too 
too in depth with it, but also trying to give them a snippet of what I learned. And hopefully that doesn't, you know, it's not too much. Uh, last year, since we started doing this player development last year, I was kind of, you know, I got the the role as the smart guy or the guy to talk to and things like that. And I just rolled, I, I rolled with it. And um, guys would come up to me and ask me questions about this. And, you know, because baseball is a great game to where there's so many ways to do whatever it is you're trying to do in the game that I try not to make it really specific, but trying to hone in on, on that guy individually and on, on how he can learn himself better and try not to make it, well, it worked for me. This is how you should do it. Cause it's going to work for you. You know, it's just how to keep it generalized so that the guys can find it themselves and what makes it them rather than using somebody else's to use them. And then they, they kind of get in a rut or something like that. Um, but yeah, guys have picked my brain and, and I like it. I like to, you know, kind of interact with, with the guys in that sense, try not to come across as a know-it-all, but just trying to help and, and, and do my part as a teammate. In 2019, you were with the team. Uh, would it be fair to say that you're still with them because you have that place where you can express yourself? Uh, as far as 2019? Uh, no, but, but, but still with them in 2021. Did you sign back with them because you knew that you had the nerd squad coming and, and you had that platform where your ideas were accepted and developed? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, them allowing me to to utilize my out my 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 stuff outside of baseball, the computer stuff, and being able to try it. Pretty much last year was our our trial and error year, and we got some video going on. I'd, I'd like to have done more with VR. We kind of spawned it there, but I I really do appreciate that being um, a possibility to to kind of th throw my my stuff out there, my my app and my uh video skills i guess you could say and being able to chop video and and what what not being able to try it out and it was a great environment to do so because it, while it was it felt a lot like professional baseball there was still kind of that relaxing sense to it where um it's not quite the frontier season but it was our own season so we had a lot of room for error to learn and and make it better especially for this season when now it's it's considered professional baseball this year Hmm. Uh, you you were a reliever for most of your pro life. Um, well, it's kind of weird in my mind because you seem a guy like that's very logical, strategical. Why would you not be a starter if you can plan around and uh, your first appearance? I'll do that to you. I'll do that to you. You seem the guy, the kind of, the kind of guy who could navigate those players for two, three appearances. Um, I never really thought of it that way. Uh, bef bef while I was with the Cubs, um, felt like I was more just a physical guy. I had had a pretty good arm. I had you know a good body, things like that. You know, I was still young. I could move around. No injuries, things like that. Um, but it really wasn't until after I went back to school that I kind of gained that logical ability. I feel like the just kind of what computer science teaches you is is logic. And um, so I kind of applied that to baseball in that sense and just kind of coming back to baseball in 2019, just being a reliever for so long, uh, just kind of fell back into the role. Had a few starts this season, the beginning of the mm -hmm. season. I was able to, to do the things that you're talking about, kind of, no, I don't really want to try and outsmart the hitter in, in a terrible sense because then you kind of get away from your strengths, but uh, especially that second start. And it was against the same team I started off uh, at the beginning of the season. Definitely learned a lot. And that's kind of what I'm talking about, that growth mindset, being able to learn from mistakes, not get too emotional about it, but be able to learn and grow. Yeah, you, you were a starter because somebody was selfish and went to his brother's wedding. Is that it? No, that wasn't it. it was I, That wasn't it. <laughs> that, 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 that came after, but um, it wasn't it wasn't purely that. It was, I uh, think, maybe some sort of discomfort feeling or something like that. Didn't want to push it. Um, so um, I was asked and I was delighted and we were able to roll with it. And I was joking, obviously. Um, <laughs> wh where do you see yourself in five years? Do you still see yourself pitching or maybe more on the managerial side or ex and as an executive? Um, I, I feel great. I see myself on the pitching side still. I, oh. I just love the game. I'm still growing. I love that at this age, so I'm still growing um mentally you know physically I feel like I'm still growing especially throughout the season I'm seeing some growth as well 
on the physical side. And so um, I would, I'd see myself pitching still. Uh, obviously, um, that's the name of the game right now because that's been my passion since five years old, watching the first big leaguer on TV and saying, I want to do that. Uh, it's, it's, it's pitching, but if not, then especially from right now, from when I was with the Cubs, I have the background to be able to roll into a good, good job that I still want to do something with baseball and computers, as opposed to before when I was with the Cubs, I kind of, I didn't have that degree. So it was kind of uncertain and, and whatnot. So now I'm, I'm, you know, if it rolls one way, I'm happy. If it rolls the other way, I'm, I'm still really happy, you know, still okay. being able to do them with baseball. Hmm. You have the pleasure of being with Chad Rhodes, who is the uh, the pitching strategist, how is it to pitch with him, uh, for him in a way? Because we talked about it a little before the interview, and I, I want to get your public public address or your public um, opinion on this. He, he's got a he's got a, a a big personality which can go both ways. Some people can like it, some people cannot like it. At the end of the day, if he does the job, that's the only important thing. What's your take on him? Um, I I really I really enjoy him as my pitching coach. Um, sometimes you just um, you kind of have that third factor, which is who you're pitching for, which is obviously you're pitching for yourself. It's your career, but you got that guy that's there to help you, which is your pitching coach. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to be able to work with him rather than it be your career and they tell you some things or whether they're trying to tell you too much and it's not your career anymore. He's 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 very understanding but also very helpful in your game and what makes you you rather than like I said earlier what makes what, what would have made a pitching coach really good he's trying to teach to the other players he's very good at adapting to each player and trying to help them be them as best as possible and he's definitely helped me with learning the split finger change um, I learned that in about 10 minutes from him used it that night and it was successful wow yeah. and um, he's definitely helped me with um, learning some mental side with you know leverage counts and things like that there's um, been a lot of things he's taught me and a lot of things that we've, we've been able to talk about and figure out kind of how to how to fix, fix a problem or how to find a solution to a problem whether it be very minor or whether it be you know big so um, I, I like having him on my side that's it's great what a great answer well wow. and for that speech change in in two and ten minutes you learned it Mm. Yeah, I mean, he showed me one day, and I'd already kind of gone through with learning the split, and it didn't feel right. It was a couple of years ago. It was, it was hurting my fingers, um, but he kind of taught me how he threw it and how he learned how he threw it, and it it just felt natural. I haven't felt that. It felt kind of like opposite of what I was trying to do before. Um, I guess before I was trying to learn some sort of a, a split fastball uh, of somewhat that was more like four to five miles an hour off. Now I use that as my changeup. Mm. Um, And my changeup was decent as it was. I just couldn't throw it consistently. So it'd be really, really good. But then sometimes I'd baby it. And with this split finger, I find myself being more aggressive with it a lot more. And that I really appreciated because that helped the mindset of being, you know, a fastball pitcher, but still having that split option. And uh, yeah, I used it that night and, and it worked incredibly. And I've been building off that ever since. And it's been great. That's amazing. What's your arsenal and your velocities? Um, I throw a four seam and a two seam. Two seams more of a sinker action. Um, I throw a the split change. Split change is about eight to ten mile an hour off of my fastball. Whoa. The the slider curveball that I throw it's a slider. It's probably like four to five, maybe six mile an hour uh, off my fastball, and uh, so that allows me to kind of get all the breaks on on different planes down. You know, get the the sinker action, arm side. You know, get the slider going glove side, and then having the fastball that has some life behind it. So it it's nice to be able to have that that view. And your four seam is uh, how many miles per hour? Uh, this year I've ranged from 91, 90, 94. I think touched ninety five. Yeah, um, yeah. not big into that. I like to see that as far as the growth that I was talking about physically, like being able to see that I'm growing my average fastball going up. That's really really good. Hmm. Staying healthy and being able to put the two together I I, I like to say you know how, how did I feel that day what was the velocity because sometimes you just feel you feel bad but the velocity is up and then sometimes you're trying to do extra and then the velocity was down so I know you know try not to do too much and I use it for that factor hmm. let's get into the the cool stuff uh, the nerd squad you were maybe the first nerd in Florence is the ownership uh supportive of what you're trying to do because I mean I, I don't want to get into your personal stuff well I guess I want to get. Uh, 
are you paid for the extra stuff that you do or it's just for fun because you know it could lead to something else it's just for fun it's okay. for fun and it's uh it's something that we've tried to do as far as managing time last year it took up a lot of time i was up till 2 a.m but it, like i said it was it was the time to do it because it was a bourbon trail league we threw together 40 plus games and if I was going to do it and lose sleep, I didn't really lose sleep because I'm up till one or two anyways. But um, that's the beauty of baseball is you can stay up late and you don't play until yeah. you go to the field till three the next day. But, uh, you know, now since we have the, the staff to do it with the nerd squad, they take care of a lot of the stuff that I had to do last year. And it takes a load off my back of being able to stay up and chop video or having to, you know, plot pitches and stuff like that. That was a strong, that was the tough part was my, app that I had built, um, I'd have to be in the bullpen to chart it. Now we have the the guys to chart it and it's going really, really well with that and being able to see all the data we get from that and working with it. And that's mainly for a resume purpose. It was kind of thought of to help my career, but then I realized it'd be a good thing to put on a resume saying that I've uh, constructed an app and put a database with it and made a web page that you can use an interface to interact with it. And um, so it's, 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 it's been, it's taken a a lot off off of my plate but it's still it still has um it's st i'm still using it a lot that, that's what i'm trying to say as we're still what? using it i'm having to do less what's the name of the app i call it pitch tracker it's very basic at the time um it tracks pitches so that's just kind of what i've put together with it but it's just a android app that i put together to pretty much just take in all of the data from the game so X, X value, Y value, what the pitch was, the pitch result, at bat result, inning score, things like that, runners in scoring position, and then just being able to do multiple things with it. I've done spray charts with it uh, for high school this past season. I coached high school this past off season. And we, I used it to generate statistics. I used it to generate pitch usage so we would see what other high school pitchers were using. And we actually used it. It was great. We, we found one pitcher was 100%. 01 breaking balls and so we were able to utilize that to our advantage and be able to see sure. that consistency that they're that they're doing over on the other side and and it worked great and uh am able to do that here and kind of use it at a higher level it's been been great so obviously you use it for your own picture to to just put them on a platform and just to maybe make them sign uh, have them signed by a big league club but you also use it against uh for the other pictures obviously right Right. Yeah. Just, just taking in the taking in the data and being able to do what I can with it. I've constantly growing with the ideas we could do with it um, right now and using it for execution charts because you can plot where the glove is supposed to be and then where the pitcher misses it so we can see how well we're able to hit our spots and things like that. So if anything, we're able to use it for our guys and, and in development purposes rather than really trying to pitch to other guys and how to have a plan, things like that, because it just changes drastically as different situations in games, different hitters and different weeks. So can the public uh, uh, download it? No, it, it's, it's only deployed through my phone and, okay. and two tablets that I have. I don't have it up and I'm not sure if I will. I just, that's one of the things I put on my resume to be able to show that I've been able to do multiple, multiple things across different platforms. Okay. Is there a balance to be found? Because uh, I had a, a great discussion with the nerd squad um, last week. Is there a balance to be found between the the info or the, the stats that you want to share with the public and what you keep for yourself? Because there is a, a very different view from the major leagues, the major league clubs who want to keep as much as they can. So it's very hidden from the public. And you who seem to be able or want to share that information to have your guys sign. So is there a balance for, for it to be competitive as a club, but again, just show that this guy is awesome because of X, Y, Z? Uh, you talking about the, the Yacker Tech numbers? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, with the, given, given the situation, our guys' goal is to get to that level. So we kind of have to be able to, project those information especially if that's what the major league clubs want to see and things like that so we're uh we're kind of especially on us pitching side since i'm i'm a nerd squad but i'm also a pitcher we kind of just we, we just keep pitching um but I, I guess they have those numbers to to help us understand who we are and to help us get better and then if ball clubs need the numbers we're there the, the numbers are available 
pretty much. Okay, so you built an app. Uh, you also built the phone line that goes from the dugout to the bullpen. Is that it? I did. I, I built it last year, and it was just to get something going because I don't think our our uh, radios that we had at the time worked. So I was able to do that and and before one of the games, and then uh, now we switched dugout, so we haven't had the luxury of using this year because I have to extend it. And there's been quite a few things I'd have to do in order to, to extend it, but it's it's on the list of things to do. But we got better better phones and a better place to put the phone, so I've got to get all that going. And hopefully here soon, able to have it you know working again. But last year when we were in the first base dugout and third and the first base bullpen, we had it had it going and everything it worked great. And obviously, if you have it, you have to uh, do it for the the other team. Is that it? Uh, eventually, yes, yes. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, and your new project, which seems to be very advanced, is the VR thing. Uh, is there a name to it? Not right now. I kind of stemmed off of the pitch tracker because where you're tracking pitches on an app, you're also now tracking pitches on VR, which ultimately is just me pitching, and I'm able to pitch right-handed, overhand, sidearm, and submarine. But then I took the video and I flipped it around so you can face me lefty, overhand, sidearm, submarine. So I have six different angles or three different angles, two different sides that you can face me. And I have fastball, curveball, change up in there. And you can get in and specify what you want. You can step on either side of the plate and 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 view it. And it's, it's working pretty well so far. Some issues here and there, but um, should be no problem doing what you're about to talk about is being able to get our guys in there rather than just me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well, exactly. So what's the goal of this thing? So you want to be able to add as much picture as possible for your editors to practice? So or do they? So what, what do they do? They'll go into the tunnel before an at bat and just go and see what will be happening in a few minutes? That's kind of when I started this whole project is what I wanted it to be was to be able to have the information and go through an at bat before you face them because one big thing I learned at Georgia with my pitching coach, Fred Corral, um, preparation is key. And within preparation, there's preparation. Within that preparation, there's preparation. It gets confusing. But um, one part of preparation would be kind of cool to face a pitcher before you go face the pitcher. Obviously. And, uh, so to be able to have that practice in there um, would be really cool. But as far as what we're doing here, um, it's more on the pitcher development side still. You would think this would be for hitters, but it's for the pitching side to be able to have those guys face themselves. Oh, we want them to be able to reinforce how good their fastball plays, how good their slider plays, rather than getting too caught up in in hitting, which hitting is very hard. We all know hitting is very hard, um, but to reinforce that idea that what you're throwing is really good because you're facing it yourself. So that's kind of what we're doing with that and in hopes that guys not that guys have lost confidence and not not at all it's just one of those things that you know it'd be cool to do and it's really really cool to just be able to see yourself i'm, I'm sure every pitcher has wanted to see themselves pitch so we're, we're able to get that going this season are you the first who's had that idea or am i just crazier um I know that when reality is, it has done some cool stuff with that. And, and uh, I'm sure pitchers can get in there and watch themselves because that, that is available, whether it was for that intention or not. We, uh, me and Chad kind of brainstormed about that last year. We wanted to do it last year. didn't have the capabilities to do it. Um, I had the quest or I had the Oculus go last year and it's not as powerful as what I have now, which is the quest two. Um, so um, I, I, I want to say that the technology was there first. Um, I can't say that they weren't doing it like that, but the way we thought of it was, hey, pitchers need to know how good they are. You know, they need to know how their stuff plays so that they can go out there and rock with it rather than trying to play and pitch too much to the hitter versus, you know, their strengths. That's, you know, you got to be able to cater to both as the situation changes. And uh, that's kind of where we went with that is to kind of reinforce that idea of how your stuff plays. I'm just wondering, how is that different from uh... – having a rap solo where you see the angle, you see the spin rate, you see exactly the movement that it should do or could do or it's doing right now and what you're working on. So how is that perspective different from the rap solo? Does that make any sense to you, that question? Um, well, we're going to be using the Yakertek numbers that come out to kind of have an idea of what the pitch is supposed to do. And with, with the Unreal Engine that I'm using, 
to be able to recreate the spin, the the angle of the pitch, the release point where it's at in the zone. So guys could potentially be able to face the at-bats that they previously pitched. Uh, oh my God. So it would be, so we in real time. Uh, yes. Yes. Pretty much real time. Be able to, to go pitch for pitch and, and be able to say, Hey, was that the pitch that I should have thrown there? Or like, okay, that was definitely a pitch. Cause that looked really good. So I'm going to, I'm going to put that in my pocket or something like that. I can barely log in into my Zoom and you build this thing. What the hell is wrong with you? Well, Are you trying to make me feel bad? I barely logged into the Zoom too. So <laughs> that's true. That's true. Is there something more that you want to say about this project in particular? Uh, what you want it to be or what it could be? You know what I mean? So is there something more that you want to say? Because I, I, I'm not privy to all the information. So I'm, I'm kind of flying blind here. Yeah, ultimately, just kind of like the other technology out there, being able to hit the ball would be great. I'm trying to think about how I could go about making the hitter feel that they hit the ball rather than just swinging through it. And oh. so being able to feel that, too, is kind of I've had some thoughts about how to how to develop a, a bat to do that. Um, and outside of that, um, mainly it was just about tracking the pitch, being able to see more pitches. You know, I um, some of the guys that have come to me and talked to me about certain things one of the responses i had was it's all about rips it's all about you know repetition the experience you know 28 versus 22 you got a lot more avs under your belt things like that so this is kind of a way to replace that to maybe get as much real experience as possible out of this vr experience um to to give you those avs in a in an environment that doesn't you know, require a pitcher to have to waste his arm to give you those pitches and have to call another catcher to get there, you know, because, you know, not everybody's available and it's hard to put, set all that up. But at least in the VR, you can track a ball and be able to recreate that experience as far as up until you need to hit it. It would be fun too for the public to just know what it is to see a 95 miles an hour fastball coming at you. It would be awesome. People would pay. I would pay for that. I would pay a great deal. I mean, I would be interested in that, to be quite honest with you. Is that something that you've thought about? I have not just because, you know, the season and a lot going on. I haven't really thought about it in the public sense. It would be kind of cool to do as far as an organization to be like, hey, step in this booth because you know how you can throw into a radar gun. Um, hey, step in this booth and put this on and see if you can hit off one of our pitchers. You know, something like that would be really cool, really neat to do. Um, I never thought about it, but it's, it's definitely as it grows, it's, it's possible. Uh, uh, do you have an agent? I do not. Well, I do have an agent. His name's Max Del Bello. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Because now you have one. And yeah. um, uh, I know you, have, you may have another project. I do not know if you want to talk about it. It begins with a B and it ends with a OOX. Book. Oh, book? Yeah. Uh, you, you haven't talked to somebody about a book? Oh, writing a book? Uh, I have yeah. not. I have you not. Have not? So you oh. lied to me, you bastard. Okay, I, I, I never, never read off my phone uh, during an interview. I hate that, but I need to see the message from Chad Rose because uh, uh, you play catch bo uh, both end with both ends? I do. I, I, I try. Yeah. You try? I, I can't. I hate you, man. But yeah, uh, because he's very, uh, but you can bust his balls because he's very sharp and witty. <laughs> I, I, oh, you make bats? I have. So, 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 so th this is my dog. Uh, uh, Jared, thank you so much for taking the time. And I, I do not know if you have another project that you're working on. Lulu? I don't know if you have another uh, another uh, uh, project that you're working on, but uh, if you want to share the, the details right here, this is the time, man. <laughs> uh, I mean, right now the main focus is I mean, I've I've written the app already and we're going through, and now it's just making minor adjustments to it. So there's not much really to keep building on that. Um, but the VR is pretty much the only thing that's I've got going on right now outside of the game of baseball. So. Um, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I keep coming up with stuff. I can let you know when, it, when they spawn, when they come up or when I'm actually working on it. But right now that VR project, I'm, I'm pretty excited to get going on that. Absolutely. And the team is going so well, man. You've got a great offense. You've got a great pitching staff, great defense. Everything's going great for you. Um, 
don't be a stranger. Keep in touch during the season. And thank you so much for taking your time. I do truly do appreciate that. It's a privilege and an honor to talk to you, man. Absolutely. I really appreciate that too. Nice. Have a good day. All right. Appreciate you too. Bye-bye.